Hello, I am Eric Ripper, chef of Le Bernardin in New York City, visiting Calgary, and tonight I'm giving a lecture. I'm going to answer a few of the questions that are in this magic hat. So, question number one. Let's see. It's from Bar. Does searing beef prior to cooking actually work to preserve the juicy therefore, thereby making a more tender, juicy serving? Yes, you have to sear the, the beef because you are going to encase the juice inside inside the flesh and you are going to give a nice crust to, um, to your steak or to the piece of meat that you are cooking. So therefore, it's a must to have a very hot pan uh, when you begin to sear uh, or, or very hot uh, flat top or whatever ustensils you use and um, not to touch the meat until you see that nice crust and then you flip it and do exactly the same and then you will have a very nice juicy uh, piece of meat. So we are going to um, answer another one. Let's see. So this one is from Lian and uh, she's asking me when you are in Calgary what food are you most looking forward to eating? Well, in the world it's two kinds of food. It's the good food and the bad food. <laughs> and I'm looking to uh, eat the good food. I started already yesterday being very spoiled going to a beautiful restaurant called, I'm sure everybody knows in Calgary, Rouge. And uh, I ate and uh, a tasting menu with many dishes, beautiful Canadian wines. And it's not over. That was the beginning today going to other places to try some food and uh, I feel very lucky um, but it's very delicious here so we go to the next one let's see what we have here so this one is from Gazard have you ever cooked a linear meal or oh, have you ever cooked a linear meal where the flavors are intended to be tested in a specific order Yes, so actually at Le Bernardin when we uh, create testing menus for our guests well, we play with the intensity or the complexity of the flavors and therefore you, you always start with something that is kind of simple and not too spicy and uh, then we build flavor on top of it with the next dish. And the next dish is a bit more complex. And toward the end is when it's when you have the most complexity, the most richness in the food, uh, and sometimes the most uh, uh, spiciness if, it's a spice, if, if we're going into that road of, of cooking spicy. Uh, but it's always a good idea to start with something simple in the beginning and then build because if you start with some complex flavors and you end up with something very simple it's going to be um, giving you the illusion of being bland so you, you want always to be, you build flavors look at another one and that will be the last one okay this one sticks to my hand so it's a, it's a must it's from Carly. Um, can you pick up one meal that has been the most memorable of your life? What was it? Where was it? Who was it with? It? Who was it with? Um, I cannot pick up one meal. It would be too unfa unfair. I had so many great meals in my life, and uh, it's very subjective. You know, I remember very well uh, when my grandmother was cooking for me and was the best meal of my life. Even with a simple grilled cheese sandwich, it was something fantastic because the company, because the fact that she was putting so much love into what she was doing, uh, a simple grilled salad by my other grandmother was an amazing experience. Of course, I have been to um, great restaurants in the world and I have... Um, the luck to know many chefs and I'm spoiled when I go to a restaurant and I have fantastic meals um, but I cannot choose one it would be unfair my mother also is a very good cook and I had many many great meals with her especially during holidays um, I have great meals all over and all the time so I'm, I'm sorry but I cannot pick one
but I'm still lucky. 